The new Homebuyer Central podcast is recorded and produced by Podcast Solutions. Do you want to start a podcast for a business, organization, or personal brand? Podcast Solutions is passionate about partnering with you for all of your podcast editing, production, and coaching needs. We strive for excellence in helping you to tell your story, your message, and your journey. Visit PodcastSolutionsNow.com and start making your podcast dreams a reality today. And now, welcome your hosts, Jeremiah Wood and Jason Villanueva. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode nine of the new Homebuyer Central podcast, where we take the guesswork out of buying your new home. I'm Jeremiah Wood, realtor with Keller Williams Hometown Partners here in Wichita, Kansas. And I'm Jason Villanueva. I am a real estate investor and a homeowner. Yes. I do own a home, yes, with my wife and children. Yes, and it's so good. And so we're going to answer all the questions. And uh, last episode, we talked about looking at homes. Looking at homes. Now, what do we do when we find the home we really, really want? You give them all your money. <laughs> Almost. So, <laughs> step number nine here on episode number nine is we are going to make an offer. Make so, an I'm offer. calling this episode Let's Make an Offer. Let's make an offer. Kind of like good. let's make a deal. Can you, do, right. can you say, let's make an offer in your best Wayne Brady voice? <laughs> no, because I haven't watched <laughs> Wayne Brady enough to okay, really Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> um, but let me go ahead and throw this point in. Um, this is a process. This episode will probably be the episode uh, that will be most easily forgotten Oh, um, because of the details. So I want to encourage you, if you want to remain uh, sharp on the details of making an offer, um, get that buyer's guide in the show link below because yes. if you have not gotten it already, you want to get that buyer's guide because it will keep you sharp on all the points you need to know about making an offer. It's because huge. There's, there's nothing real memorable about it, but when making an offer, there are some very specific things that you'll want to remember. Okay. All right. So get that guide in the show notes below and let's keep going. So when you found the home of your dreams, it is... Time to make that offer. So as your buyer's agent, your realtor will actually draw up a contract uh, with your offering price and any necessary contingencies that are involved. And uh, they will turn this into a formal contract and present it to the listing agent. Okay. So Jason, let me just kind of put this in a role play. All right. right. You Let's find a house that you want and you say, Jeremiah, yeah, and and I'm your list. I'm your buyer's agent. Okay, and you say, Jeremiah, I want you uh, to help us buy this home. Right. So then I would do all the paperwork and get all the paperwork together to be able to create a contract mm. to buy the home that you want to buy. Okay. And so what we have to understand is that when we submit this contract. Uh, after I write the contract up, uh -huh. I'm going to have you review the contract. Okay. And you're going to, we're going to go through this together. Okay. And after we go through the contract together, you'll either have some questions, which I hope we do, because again, the theme of this podcast is ask, 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 ask yes. as many questions as possible. It's good. So we're going to review the contract. You're going to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure that we're on the same page and that everything is perfect. Yep. And so it is exactly what we want. And we're going to submit that to the listing agent. Okay. So your signature is going to be on that contract right away. And then as soon if if they accept our offer, mm -hmm. then the sellers will sign the contract. Okay. And as soon as both parties have signed the contract, you are now in a legally binding contract for the purchasing of this home. Okay. S All right. Seems simple enough. So the next step in making an offer is you have to provide what's called earnest money. Yes. Have you ever heard of earnest I money? I have heard of earnest How money. How would you explain earnest money in the most simplest of terms? It's a certain amount of money that you give to show that you are truly serious about purchasing the home. Yes. It's like, hey, here's we're going to give you $2,000 just to let you know we're serious about this. Right. Absolutely correct. Not necessarily 2000 but an amount of money. So whenever you submit the contract mm -hmm. um, or submit the offer, there's going to be several things that you're going to include in the offer. Uh, one will be the earnest money. 
Okay. Now you don't pay the realtor that. You and your realtor will go to the title company mm. and you give the earnest money to the title company. Oh, okay. So the money does not go to the sellers and the money does not go to the agents. It gets held um, in an account by the title company until closing. Okay. And then um, escrow, uh, not escrow, earnest money is uh -huh. typically um, anywhere from one half to 1% of the total cost. But okay. a lot of times we just kind of settle maybe for, uh, if it's under a hundred thousand dollar home, we yeah. settle for about $500. Oh, okay. If it's over, um, a hundred thousand, typically about a thousand thousand dollars. And so does that go toward that goes towards the purchase price of the house? Okay. All right. So okay. it's not just extra money that you pay. Nope. It goes... It's just to show the sellers that you're serious about buying their house. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like good faith money. Good faith money, yeah. All right, so you have the earnest money. They say put your money where your offer is. And there you go. <laughs> That's exactly right. So we have the earnest money in the contract. Um, you will also need to provide a letter from your lender that shows you are pre-approved, mm. not pre-qualified. Pre-approved. Pre-approved. Yep. That And if you remember, if you go back to episode, uh, just a few episodes back, sure. um, that you'll understand that there's a difference between pre-approval and pre-qualified. Right. So with a pre-approval letter and earnest money and the contract, you're able to make a successful offer. That's the fun part. Right. That <laughs> is the fun part. And then the really fun part is when you get the keys and you move in. But that's, right. that's a little bit later. So um, after you present an offer mm -hmm. to a seller, there's typically going to be uh, a couple scenarios uh, that may happen um, once the offer is presented, right. right? So scenario number one, the seller uh, will accept your offer. Yeah. And what a great, what a great That's what you want. Um, the second scenario, uh, the, the seller will actually reject yeah. your offer yeah. altogether and be like, no, Not this is baloney. We don't want this. <laughs> We don't want this at all. Um, the third scenario, and most likely, is the seller will actually counter offer, mm -hmm. and then you will go into what is called negotiations. Sure. So this is what, uh, in most cases, uh, when a seller doesn't accept your offer outright, mm -hmm. um, the typical counter offers include modifications to the contract. Sure. And those modifications are typically going to be like purchase price, mm -hmm. uh, could be closing date, Closing fees, closing costs. Closing fees, closing cost, uh, date of possession. Okay. So typically, mm -hmm. uh, we write in the contract that we want to take possession at the time of closing, mm -hmm. um, and that's 30 to 45 days from when you make the offer. Okay. Um, but there are some cases where if people are still living in the home, yeah. that may not be enough time for them to get out. It out. So they may say, um, we'll accept the offer, but we want the closing date to be 60 days right. out or 90 days out to give us time to find a home sure. and to get moved and make everything right. Yep. Um, and then another part of the negotiations uh, are typically repairs that need to be done at the house yeah. and maintenance items. And all those things, again, they're all negotiable. Sure. And so, again, when you are negotiating your contract, ask ask questions. I'm catching ask. on finally. That's Episode right. nine, I'm getting it. So can I ask you a quick question about offers? <clears throat> Excuse me, they get rejected? Yeah. What are some pretty typical scenarios of why a seller would reject an offer? Um, right now in today's market, a seller will reject a lowball offer. A lowball. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, you know, back when our parents were buying their first homes, mm -hmm. um, the market was totally different. Yeah. You could make lowball offers. Okay. And a lowball offer is typically anything, um, maybe seven to $10,000 under asking price. Okay. Uh, but right now, everything is going for seven to ten to fifteen thousand over, over asking price. So people are paying more than asking right. price. So a lowball offer is going to be an immediate rejection yeah. in this market. Okay. Um, another another rejection is if you ask for too much. Okay. So you if you say we'll give you asking price, uh, but we want you to pay all of our closing costs right. and all of our fees. Yeah. We want you to put a new roof on the house. Yeah. We would like you to install <laughs> new windows. Uh, a new paint job might be great. And please scrape that wallpaper. Yeah, that'd be right? fantastic. And so when you ask <laughs> uh -huh. for too much, for too much. Um, it 
is too much. Yeah. And that can be rejected. And the reason why it's rejected is a lot of times uh, people are competing for that house. You're not the only offer. Right. There may be three, six, ten offers on the table. Yeah. And that will be part of the negotiations. Mm -hmm. And that's just the market right now. There that are is. a lot of people. That is. It's a seller's market, as they say, right? That's right. It is a seller's market. So you should be prepared uh, for the negotiations to actually go back and forth mm -hmm. maybe three, four, five, six, seven times okay. until you are able, like if they mm -hmm. if they want you to be able to buy this house, yeah. um, then you can expect negotiations to go back and forth until you find that happy place where all parties are equally accepting of that contract. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the seller and the, both the buyer have signed the contract, you are both in a legally binding contract for the purchase of that house. That's awesome. Right. So um, let me just finish with this thought real quick. As a buyer, you will be in a better negotiation position. Like, this is what I want for you. I want you to be in the best mm -hmm. position possible to win at these negotiations. And here's how you do it. Um, you have to be pre-approved for a mor mortgage. Right. Right. Without that pre-approval, you will not get that home. Mm. Um, the second thing is this, you are not selling a house at the same time. So that's what we call a contingency. Okay. And the contingency says, Jason, I'll buy your house, but you have to give me time to sell my house first. Yeah. And so there are a lot of buyers out there who are already, who have already sold their house uh -huh. and they're ready to move in right away. Sure. And so you want to make sure that your house is sold before you buy the next house that you're going to be in. Yeah. And for some, that might mean being in uh, a hotel a hotel for a couple of weeks. Right. Uh, that might mean being in a rental for maybe staying a month or some three. Family, staying with some you family. Do. You just got to make things happen in order to get the house that you want. Yeah. And so just make sure that you are not selling a house at the same time. Sell your house first and then try to get on your buying your new home. Yep. Um, and then third thing is this. Uh, that you have not loaded your offer with, like we just talked about, all kinds of contingencies. Sure. I need this, I need this, I need this, mm -hmm. I need this. Mm -hmm. The fewer contingencies you have in the negotiation, the better position you will be in to win those negotiations. Have you been in a scenario with a couple or a, a home buyer and they've come up with some contingencies and you've just had to, with your professional advice, say, hey, let's maybe consider taking off this one and this one. You'll probably have a better likelihood of getting this home. Or do you just allow them to go ahead and give those knowing that they're probably not going to get it? Right. So one of the best reasons to have not just a real estate agent, but to have a really good real estate agent is something called fiduciary duty. Okay. And uh, a fiduciary duty and responsibility is that me, the agent, has a, a legal responsibility to always work on your best half. Yeah. And, and to do everything that is best for you. Sure, sure. And so if your contract is loaded uh, with things that I know will cause you to lose the house, yeah. I'm going to counsel you. Yeah. On that. Okay. And tell you, hey, I've done this sure. uh, hundreds of times. Yeah. And and if you want this house, this is going to have to be what you need to do uh, to this contract to get it. Yeah. And That's so, great. And a lot of times people look at the situation and they'll say, you're right. Okay. Well, if that's what it takes, then then let's do it. Professional opinion, it goes a long way. It does. It does. And and it's professional for a reason. That's right. It's an opinion, but it's a professional opinion. That's right. Yeah. And it's an opinion that will save you lots of time, lots of frustration, yeah. and lots of money. That's great. So, hey, thanks so much for joining us on episode number nine here on the new Home Buyer Central podcast, where we take the guesswork out of buying your new home. I'm Jeremiah Wood, realtor here in Wichita, Kansas. I'm Jason Villanueva. All right. And what do you do? I am a real estate investor and a homeowner. That's right. <laughs> and we'll see you guys again next All time. Right, Thanks we'll for joining you. us.